Little wins, right? Yeah. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So in the last two videos we went over the wiring for the APM using this schematic. We also loaded the firmware and configured the Minim OSD and configured the Easy UHF receiver by PPM to the APM. Now we're going to get the APM programmed using the Mission Planner. Now I've got a USB cable plugged in right here and the other end is going to my laptop where we have the mission planner. Okay, we're in the mission planner now. Let's hit connect. Let's connect to the APM. And what we're going to do is download the parameters from the APM to the mission planner. So it's getting all of the parameters that are currently in it from the factory. And when it gets done doing this, we can look at the firmware version up at the top of the screen. It says Arducopter version 321. Okay, let's verify that by going to the Flight Data tab. And then we go to, right here, Messages. And if you look under Messages, you can see Arducopter V3.2.1. So that's what we have right now. So now let's go to Initial Setup and disconnect. You always have to disconnect to install the firmware. Alright, let's click on firmware install here and we're going to get the list of firmwares that are available. Now it's going to put up 371. I don't know why but we're just going to click on the plane because that's what we want and we're going to get the uh, current stable version that's available and we'll see what that is in a minute. Okay, so it's uploading the firmware now after downloading it. So uploading to the APM, and then it's got to verify it. And uh, I'm going to show you something that happened to me the first time I tried it, and I got a strange message. So what happened was I clicked on the plane, and 371 again. I clicked yes, and then it went through the process of downloading the firmware, and then went to uploading the firmware, and it failed. And I got this timeout message, and I don't know why I got this at all. So I just went ahead and unplugged the APM, disconnected the power from the APM basically by unplugging the USB, then plugged it back in and restarted and tried it again, and it finished, and now it's done. Okay, so now let's connect again, and we'll go ahead and check what the firmware version is now, because I have no idea. I'll bet you it's not 371. Okay, so let's go to the, the flight data tab again. And you can already see it up at the top what the version is. But here it is, Arduplane version 3.4, right there. Arduplane version 3.4.0. So that's the current stable version, and that's what we wanted. And now that we've done the new firmware update, we can now see that the artificial horizon moves when I move the APM and some of the other numbers are now being input into their proper places. But there's a lot more to do than just that. Okay, let's go to the mission planner and we'll go ahead and uh, calibrate the compass first so we can get that working. Now don't forget to remove this jumper over here because that disables the internal compass and also enables the external compass. So we need to remove that jumper and that's here on the schematic and I've updated the schematic and posted the new version to show that you have to remove that jumper to use the external compass. So we're in the mission planner. Let's go ahead and connect. Then we go to initial setup. And in initial setup you can actually use the wizard to go through and set up all your hardware, but I prefer to use mandatory hardware. It's uh, basically the same thing, it's just the wizard walks through all these items, but I'm going to go ahead and go in the order that I want to do. Start with the compass right here, so let's go to compass. We'll go ahead and enable compass, obtain declination automatically, automatically learn offsets, let's use the external compass, and then click use this compass. Now we're going to be setting these parameters right here by doing the calibration. So let's do the live calibration. Okay, please click OK and move the Archo Pilot around uh, in all the directions basically. Okay, so I'm just moving it around with my hands. 
Notice we're not moving the APM because it's an external compass. Okay, so the setup, the setting failed to write, but we can still take care of that. I think that's just a Windows problem. I'm using Windows 8, so it couldn't write. But here's the params right here that we're going to be writing. Let's go to the configuration tab here, go to full parameter list, and then just click the write button, and that'll write the params in for us. And if we scroll down, we can actually see where these params went in. You can see down here, let's see, right here, 2150 and 68 there. It's minus 2150, minus 68. So that went in right there. And if you go back to initial setup, you can see the same values right here. So the compass is now set up. Okay, the GPS is working. Six satellites, and that's down here in the basement, so I call that a success and also I have GPS coordinates right here and up top here is the compass rose and it's now working too. Okay so next thing I'd like to get working is the battery voltage and current right here. So let's go ahead and do that and get that working. So let's go ahead and configure the battery voltage. We're going to go to initial setup right here and then we're going to go to optional hardware. We were in mandatory hardware right here, but I'm going to jump ahead and go to optional hardware and then battery monitor. And for the monitor, we're going to set in monitoring voltage and current right here. And for the sensor, we're going to pick the 3DR power module. Now the APM version is already okay on default. It's the APM 2.5 plus and we have the 2.6, so that's good. So there's one more thing we have to do. We need to go to configuration and tuning right here and then go to advanced or full parameter list rather and then scroll down to enable the battery monitoring which usually is a zero. Uh, right now I have it set to a four but if you find that it is a zero just go in here and change it to a 4 and then write the parameters. And we're going to unplug the APM, then plug in the battery, then plug the APM back in. Okay, now let's go ahead and connect again. And then back in initial setup here we can see that we now have our voltage so everything is working fine. Okay, and now you can see that the battery voltage is now working. And I've checked this with my voltmeter. And the battery is reading this amount, so everything looks good. Okay, let's go back to initial setup. And then to mandatory hardware. And we'll do the accelerometer calibration right here. Place vehicle level and press any key. All right. I don't have an any key, so I'll just press enter. Place vehicle on its left side and press any key. Place vehicle on its right side and press any key. I'm just turning it around. Place vehicle nose down and press any key. I'll just point the arrow down. Place vehicle nose up and press any key. Place vehicle on its back and press any key. Excel range, 19.6, 19.6, 19 19.9. Alright, so that's done. Now, let's just place it level and we'll do this other one. Completed. Okay, let's go ahead and do our radio calibration. Now I have the battery plugged into the APM and the APM is plugged into the computer by the USB. So let's go to initial setup and we'll go down to radio calibration right here. Let's just make sure all our sticks are going in the right directions. So I'm trying the throttle now and and it looks like it's on the roll instead of on the the yaw though looks okay except it's reversed now the pitch is actually on the throttle and the roll is actually on the pitch so 
There's a couple of things we can do to fix this. One is we could go in the radio and change the channels in the radio. But there is another thing we can do and that's go to configuration and tuning right here and go to the full parameter tree which is easy to view it's all in alphabetical order and I kinda like that so go down to RC map open that up and we can change our channels right here so let's put the throttle on one and the pitch I think that goes on channel three I believe and then the roll is on channel 2. Okay, let's try that. We'll write the parameters. We'll go back to initial setup and see what we have. So throttle is now okay. Okay, the yaw is okay, but it's reverse. So let's go ahead and check reverse on that. Okay, pitch is fine just the way it is. Okay, roll is okay but it's reverse so let's click reversed on that alright so now we'll go ahead and calibrate the radio okay click calibrate ensure your transmitter is on and the receiver is powered and connected ensure your motors do not have power no props okay we'll click OK now we just have to move the RC sticks all around and switches to says that okay so I'm moving my RC sticks make them bang against the red bars make sure all of the different sticks are correct going up and down all the way full throw okay we've done all that now I'm just gonna go ahead and flip my mode switch there's two mode switches here the feed into one channel so I'm just flipping them because we need them later for the flight modes okay so everything is set up properly let's click done okay now you have to put your uh, all your sticks in the center but throttle down and click OK again and there's all the parameters so we're done okay so I'm going to be covering flight modes and fail safe in the next video because they are kind of related and kind of long so I'm gonna save them for the next video so let's go ahead and do the airspeed sensor next which is down here so the airspeed sensor looks like this it's a pitot tube and it has one tube for the ambient pressure and one for the wind pressure and then the two tubes go back to a unit that differentiates between them and measures the uh, the differential for the pressure and that unit looks like this right here it's inside my Skywalker but I'm going to use this one for the the demo and it's just a block it has two tubes going to it and that's what measures the airspeed and now let's plug it into the APM I'm just going to run a wire from this over to the APM on the bench. The airspeed sensor plugs into channel 0 right here on the APM right next to the wire for the telemetry radio and the minimum OSD. So right like that. Okay so let's go ahead and set up the airspeed sensor. So basically it's already enabled by default and it's on pin 0, APM analog pin 0 by default. So all we have to do is click use airspeed sensor right there. Okay, now let's go over to the flight data. And I'm on the status right here and you can see airspeed right here. And you can see it's bouncing around at a low value. But if I go ahead and touch the pitot tube with my finger just tap on it a little bit you can see it bounces up to around three or four so we know it's working so that's basically all there is to it so that's it for this video but in the next video we're gonna go ahead and set up the flight modes which we need to get ready so we can do fail safe so we'll do flight modes and fail safe in the next video and for my mini talon two left wing dilemma I contacted GearBest and they said they would send me one for free. That's a right wing, of course. But it might take 25 days or more. So I went ahead and went to Banggood and actually ordered one. It was about $10. And I also got uh, some 8x6 props 
coming and a few control horns. So that might speed up the process of solving the problem. Keep your light.